Cash Color Campus podcast sponsored by the Georgia Hemp Company. The Georgia Hemp Company, dedicated to providing you with access to the highest quality hemp products and a place to learn more about hemp's potential benefits and uses. Head to thegeorgiahempcompany.com to learn more. Cash Color Cannabis, a higher level of conversation on live hiphopdaily.tv, sponsored by the Georgia Hemp Company. And I got my other guest in the building, Antoinette McLaughlin. How you doing, Antoinette? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm feeling good, man. <laughs> I've actually, you know, I thought you was going to, I've been hearing your name for last couple, since last week because you've been a potential guest for a little while. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. You know, when, oh, when, when your name first floated down. Right. Yeah, serious, serious. When your name first floated down the timeline. All I heard was Trap Museum, and I was like, damn it, put her in here. Because I, I want to do a, I want to do a podcast at the Trap Museum so bad. So well, I was you like, should. Yeah, we should, man. I need to go ahead and pitch that to somebody. I mean, it's it's, <laughs> it's already done. Consider it done. That's what's up. Her, we bring a live hip-hop daily to the Trap Museum. So. I hope y'all get in trouble for doing that. Nah, nah, nah. We <laughs> nah, gonna do it. it. should be fine. We gonna do it. We gonna do that, man. But I do appreciate you coming through, because I was always, the Trap Museum, as well as um, Motel 21, like, I'm loving these activations. And to know that you're behind two of them you know yeah. what i'm saying is super dope so i'd like to talk to you about that tonight okay um first question you know who is antoinette mclaughlin, uh, McLaughlin excuse me. uh well i'm a native okay of, okay of atl okay that's you gotta you gotta specify that atl okay. born and raised yeah. on the west side shot it mm. <laughs> so um we'll start there and um I've been in entertainment for about 10 years now, okay. you know, professionally doing a lot of different things. I own one of the top production companies in the city. We do a lot of music videos, commercials, um, and we just started doing, you know, brand activations and experiential pop-ups, as people <laughs> like to call them. And so uh, that's, the, that's, the quick, that's the quick version. Word, word, that's um, what's up. You know. so how did you find yourself in entertainment? Like, like and, and then how did you, not only did you find yourself in, a, in in entertainment, but how did you find yourself not being a rapper, not being a singer, <laughs> and doing this other well, stuff? Well, I kind of was. I was in front of the camera at first. Um, I was a professional dancer, okay. so I was a backup dancer back when Video Vixens was popping, but I wasn't a Video Vixen. Nothing wrong with that, but I, I wasn't. Say, don't be, don't be, don't be, yeah, don't and I mean, I was with them. I mean, yeah. I was there. So, but I was a trained dancers so um it was just a different you know different part of the music video that i was mm -hmm. in so i did a lot of shows i toured with artists like jagged edge and lloyd sammy nivia um did a lot of music videos because atlanta so you, know, you toured with atlanta too like i'm yeah. from atlanta and i went on tour with Atlanta. yeah basically. yeah um okay. I remember I did Yin Yang Twins uh, birthday bash. I wait, you was a backup dancer? For, wait, wait, for what yes, song? Yes, uh, Whisper. I was about to say, tell me it was Whisper. It was Whisper, and if you go, like sometimes I'll go back and try to find oh, I'm about to YouTube. some old YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. But I found myself in on stage because phones weren't. We didn't have like videos. They weren't in the um, air constantly. Yeah, so I found an old video. It's very pixelated, but I I see myself. Uh, do a little dance. I can see you hitting one of these and then bending all. Yep, it was just like that. It was just like that. And so, yep. Um, <laughs> so dance with you. I was excited about dance with you, Smith, because I like their music. Um, so, I mean, a lot of different people. I'm probably forgetting a few folks, but um, I was in Stomp the Yard. I was in Drumline. So anyway, I started because I was a dancer. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got started. That's what's up. And so a, a dancer, dancer too. You know, because this is Atlanta, you could confuse dancer with. Somebody. Oh yeah. yeah, you could totally confuse it. Yeah. I can't shake my butt like that though. <laughs> I try. It doesn't work. I can do an eight count though. That's what's up. Well, you made a smooth transition from dance into where you are now with the experimental marketing and the branding and everything that you're doing that you're able to do for artists and for and for labels. How did that transition? happened in the first place like when did you know that 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 was going to be the next move for you um it's it's actually really easy because for me um i just felt like my voice was a lot bigger than kind of where it was mm -hmm. um being a backup dancer i kind of had a lot of solutions and i wanted to help develop artists um and develop projects mm -hmm. and i couldn't do that as a dancer um now you can kind of you know for women too like you can, in entertainment, you could do kind of whatever you want. You could do a bunch of different things. But for me at the time, back in 2003, four or five, you couldn't do that many different things. Like, it's like, what are you doing? Pick what you do. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I feel like I'm gonna be bigger behind the camera instead of in front of the camera. Okay. And so um, 
I just started to start like, you know, interning at labels and I knew a lot of people already because I was already in the industry, but I just took a different approach of like uh, interning and connecting myself with labels and producers and just kind of like finding my wave until I, something stuck. Um, I ended up doing, I started doing radio. I did not want to do radio. I hated doing radio. Um, I was like, a mic, I, I was I did the B markets, helping like work records and get the mix show DJs to play it, remembering the PDs and MDs. And I did that with Dev Jam South. And so I didn't want to be there. I wanted to be in marketing, but I kind of like just took whatever, whoever accepted me, you know, because when you're an intern, it's not what you want. It's no, where they put you. Basically. So, you know, as that grew, I learned and learned and found my niche in, or niche or whatever in different places and found out where people liked me, where they didn't like me, what worked, and then it grew and um, started making money doing it. <laughs> what was the first, what was the first, I guess, big, I don't, yeah, big break. What was the first big break for you that took you officially from off, ooh, that took you officially off the stage and into this whole new world? Was a big break? Yeah. There was no big break. <laughs> um, it was just me making a decision to focus on whatever that was. Okay. It wasn't like a thing. Um, I just, I'm kind of like hard on myself. So it's like, I didn't feel like I could do both. So it was kind of like, if you really want to do this, then you kind of got to, you, you got to pick what you want to do. Yeah. You can't go on the road because you want to go make some money this weekend, but then want to come back to Atlanta and help pass out flyers <laughs> for an artist. Yeah. It was like, and, and one is two different levels. And so, and I was a female, male dominated industry. It was just, I don't know what that was, but I just told myself I need to pick what I wanted to do. I couldn't, I didn't think I could do both. Yeah. So um, the big break was just making a decision to say I want to work in the music industry. That's solid. And that's actually was your big break. Your big break was deciding to do it. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's up. Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the things I was impressed with in being in Atlanta the last couple of years was um, some of the stuff I was seeing pop up around artists. And it started with, pink, for me, it started with um, the Pink Trap House. Mm -hmm. When I saw 2 Chains do that, I thought that was such a dope, 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 dope idea. I thought it was really imaginative. I thought it was real creative. And I thought it was real out the box for artists. Right. And I wished other artists did stuff like that. And then came other shit. And now, <laughs> and now all the artists are trying to push the envelope, basically, which is great. Two Chains definitely set the tone. Basically, basically, um, man. But you, you, you lays a lot of solid groundwork out here with Trap Museum and Motel Twenty One. Mm -hmm. um, speak to us about how you got involved, one with Trap Museum, and then later how you got involved in helping out Twenty One Savage with his creative activation around his album, his album release. Uh, well, I'm kind of everyone's probably like my thing. I, I know a lot, you know, over the years, of course, I've gained relationships with a lot of different artists. Mm -hmm. And so the thing that's special about me is that um, they can kind of call me at any time and just have creative, wild conversations. Artists can call me, their managers can call me. You kind of don't have that relationship with other agencies or like companies. It's kind of like a certain way you got to go about reaching out to them. So. I'm always the one that gives the calls with crazy ideas. So um, for the Trap Music Museum, T.I., first it was his management that hit me up and was talking about some crazy idea about a, telling me they wanted to get a house. <laughs> they was like, we want to get a house, like the pink trap house, and we want, art, we want, we want people to escape the trap. And I was like, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> escape the trap. It's like, yeah, you know you ever been to an escape room? You gotta come up with clues, and you gonna come up with the clues, you can get out. So we wanted to look just like the hood, and I have a house not too far from here. So they was like, Anthony, like your house. A house like that, bruh, and bruh. it was like, <laughs> like, my it, was like it was like a house like that, you know, we just get some old furniture, put it in there, and then, you know, people gotta figure out clues to get out the house. And I said, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Um, it, it's just, it just I like to think about what's just thousands of people coming to a house my size. It's too many, it's too many moving parts. It's too, too many moving parts yeah, in the yeah. neighborhood. So, I mean, they hit me with it. And then Tip texted me a couple times, like, have you talked to, you know, Doug, have you talked to him? Did you get it? Let me explain it to you. you know, <laughs> Tip, Tip said, let me tell you. Tip loves to explain himself. Um, of course, everyone knows. And I bet with really big words. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so he didn't think they were telling to me right, so. <laughs> so let me do it. He had to like overly explain his idea, then I had to pull up on him. 
Then we had to go ride around in the car, figure it out. He had the overly, I can hear T.I. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, in his head right and now. So it, it took us having to actually get in a car and drive around the neighborhood mm. um, to just get my brain to understand what they meant. Yeah. Um, and, again, I'm probably the only person that would sit there and listen that long, <laughs> consistently, without understanding, to be able to pull the ideas together. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it was beautiful. And then um, he ended up having a building and somebody with me, she works in film and she was like, Antoinette, let's just build out the space. And I was like, no, I want to find a house. And so they was like, we got houses. Let's take you down bank here. We got houses. I was like, mm -hmm. we can't buy the whole block. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't do that. Just, we can't disrupt the neighborhood like that. So. You know, um, hey, you I mess around and gentrify the neighborhood you love by accident. Yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> for real. I mean, the bluff is definitely turned upside down. Have you definitely, seen it? but the trap museum is in the bluff. Mm. Um, it's right mm. at the corner of Bankhead and one weird area, Bankhead North Avenue, um, English Avenue area. So, it's I love that it's there. I'm kind of going jumping the gun a little bit, but I love that it's there because um, the community can now like touch art and like go see it, go into a museum when they never would go into a museum and it's and it's in their neighborhood it's only ten dollars to get in you know and you get to take some pictures That's and post it on the internet but anyway yeah i went off track no it's cool it's a super dope activation though like like and i thought it was really creative and i liked how you kind of um it's 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 still around you know what i mean it's not like one of those things that was kind of a fly by night deal it was supposed to be a pop-up. I thought so too, but y'all uh, survived it. it. It's all good. You know, <laughs> that, it, it worked and it's now staple. Yep. Um, it is now considered an actual museum. Like, I mean, it was, it's, and, and understand what I say by that, you know, it's for art, for art heads, for those folks who are really into museums and like traveling and go different countries. They look at museums a certain way on a certain level. So to be considered an actual Staple Museum is, is huge. Yeah. It is definitely different. It's not traditional. No, I mean, I'm pretty sure people would come to see that. It's, it's one of those things where, um, like the Gucci's and, and the Gucci pictures and, and, and Jeezy's and all those, it's almost like you're looking at some of the artists that you, you admire, but you're looking at them from a point of view of something they just kind of sing about. So it's, mm -hmm. it's one of those attractions where, yeah, I can see somebody coming from another city to see this, especially if you are a major fan of T.I. or Gucci's or- People Wild love it. Either. Like, yeah. I didn't even know that it was gonna get the reviews and the response that it got. You know, I'm just a person putting it together and just putting my extra thinking cap on, but I didn't really realize um, from all ages how people would receive it and just kind of embody that that movement and that art and that form just it still amazes me but you know now motel 21 was it is it was it was a different type of animal yeah that was fun <laughs> talk to us about that because that was for tw that was for 21's um greater i am greater i than am greater than i was uh it was it was um so that process was the same process except i wasn't dealing with 21. I was dealing with his team and um, um, everyone moves differently. So I think, you know, he probably was just feeding them. Everybody was coming up with ideas to go around the album, how they wanted to release and do the rollout. And um, ultimately they came up with this idea. I still don't really know where the motel, I know why the motel was chosen. Mm. Uh, and I'll say that part, but I don't know what made them do want to do a motel. He was, he grew up in, in the area um indicator right across from the motel and used to trap out that motel and he used to you know i guess do a lot of different things outside that motel that i don't really know all that deep those details pertinent details but it's definitely a a motel <laughs> <laughs> so that it was it, it, it meant something special to him and his team to to use that place because he's no longer there anymore Word. i am greater than i was so um anyway they, it was, I can't remember how many songs on the album because we did more rooms than was on the, than, than was on the album. And they wanted to do, um, um, act out or showcase the music on each, each song on the album with art. And so they kind of just gave me the songs and I had to get with my team and build out what those rooms look like. We go look at the motel. I'm looking at this terrible looking motel. Like, how are we going to turn this thing upside down? Um, Cause it's brown, it's tan. The sign doesn't turn on. It just wasn't <laughs> flattering. Um, and so, 
the room, putting the team together and us figuring it out, we turned it upside down and it was definitely popping. Yeah, it was a hit. It was, it was, it was definitely a hit. I'm still getting traffic on my website from it. Like, really? Did you come? I, I, no. Actually, I got invited. Oh. No, let me tell you, I got invited and, they, and um, they sent me the recap pictures. So I was like, yo, I was looking at it and I was like, yo. And this is why, and the crazy part, I didn't come because I didn't want to miss, I didn't want to miss, I want to say it was the shows happening that night, so I couldn't miss the show. It was only five days. I'm not sure how it was promoted, but yeah. you know, that really wasn't my department, but. Yeah. Um, but I did want to go. I thought it was. I thought it was dope. Um, the rooms. I, I'm. I still am. I still appreciate our art that we did because we were able to really flip rooms upside down. So literally, if you walk into a motel room and you see a bathroom, it's already like open face. Mm -hmm. um, bathroom sink, terrible bed. Bed um, sheets. I'm remembering it all. Yeah, I see. Uh, Flashbacks. Smells carpet. Uh, tables, TVs, it mirrors. A, it was a trap motel. Ooh, ACs that don't work. Um, so we had to really take, we took everything out, cleaned the motel, mm -hmm. and like, like tried to get it clean. And then we added walls to cover up those bathrooms, those open face bathrooms. And then we put the art in there. Y'all put in work work. Anyway, and we did it all in one week. Sheesh, man. Just five, to, five days. For it to last five days. So. Yeah, and then we broke it down in two days. Mm, mm. <laughs> so, yeah, you do work, work. Yeah. So, um, when it comes to projects, like, how do you, well, you already told us that part. Uh, what's, what's the next, what's the next thing you're working on? Or can you mention it, actually? Uh, I can't mention it, but um, I can't ever mention any of these because they're so, like, new. So, everybody wants it to be a surprise. Yeah. Um, but... I do have one that's really cool um, that's coming up. It will be, uh, I'll make sure I let you know so you can let your your, your viewers and your fans know. Um, it will be in this area, um, it is very nostalgic. I like to say old to the west side, old to the south. Um, anybody from the south that's grown up. Like south side? No, the south east oh, region. Okay. Maybe even Midwest. I don't know what they do over there. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's definitely a Southern thing. And so um, for Atlantans, it's, it's going to be a, a hit. Um, and so it's going to be another pop-up, experiential pop-up, where people can come and walk through an experience and take away from it and take pictures. And I'll be planning out some more, hopefully some that can last forever. Yo, that is super dope. You know what I mean? So, um Last question for you, I guess. If if at the end of the, at the end of your career and when it's all said and done, what do you want to be remembered for the most? Is uh, it dancing with Yin Yang Twins? <laughs> the motel definitely twins not. Even though I still love them, <laughs> when I see them, I'm like, oh my god, Yin Yang Twins. <laughs> do they say shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it to you? And then uh, you just turn around and start they dancing? do make random ad libs. <laughs> um, if you're ever around them, don't they do that at time? They, they, yeah, they, they say, they, um, shake in shake conversation, shake. they say ad lib. So, um, almost like something's not right. So they talk and rap. Like I know somebody, a friend of mine talks and rap. Yeah. You, a lot of rappers do it. Yeah. Like you'll hear it in their music and you like, think that it's like them just in the studio doing it. But yeah. in conversation, yeah. they'll, what's that dude? The um, designer, like he'll do it in the middle of, con what is it? The thing that he does designer. Uh, yeah. Don't. So like. I, I've been in a green room and we were just talking and then he just burst out and did it. <laughs> yeah, like exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, Yin Yang Twins, they do that in conversation. They'll Boy. just kind of blur something. Let me find out that he got real life Tourette's. So, uh, maybe I didn't really take it that way because he made him make money, so. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, he used to do that. That yeah. was designer. Yeah, okay. you definitely hear him in the hallway. You know he's around because you just heard, oh, there's designer. I hear him in the hallway. He's just screaming noises. What do you want to um, remember for? So, I mean, just, that's kind of an interesting question because I can't answer it. Uh, These wings are smacking too. You might want to get some. I don't. I don't. I don't want to be fucked up. But um, just kind of doing whatever I want to do. Being able to um, just take seeds and make them blossom. Um, any idea I have, there is, not, there, is no, there is not a no or I can't. I can do whatever I want to do. Yeah. So if it's building a freaking anything, I, I, I can do it. So 
I want to be known for whenever she wants to do something, whatever she puts her mind to, she does it. That's what's up. So if I was to do the Cash Color Cannabis Activation and I want a grow house, I'm coming to you? Oh, you do? Okay, so you need to come. You definitely need to come to the escape room because our added room mm. is a grow room. Get out of here, really? Yeah, if, this- if I can show you before I leave. So... Um, I would love to do one around it, and oh. I actually have a cool idea for it, too. I like, well, can we be involved? Because, I mean, cash color cannabis. Like, we have to have some kind of hand in that. Yeah. Um, yeah so, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely give you a walkthrough so you can see it. It's a really cool addition that we added on. Cool. Yeah. Cool. That's what's up. And it smells like weed and everything. Say we got fake weed smells that come out the vent. Say no more. We got we to gotta pull up. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that? Thank you for coming through the show tonight. Thank you. I appreciate you. you. And that's Cash Color Cannabis, a high-level of conversation on live, hiphopdaily.tv. We out. Deuces.